Hello all. Welcome to the another lecture of communication module. In this lecture, we are going to discuss general packet radio service. Also, general packet radio system, shortly called as GPRS. In the previous lecture, we have discussed GSM, that was one of the standards of second generation, and the second generation was used mainly for voice calls. So GPRS because the user demands are increasing day by day. Besides voice calls, the user now also wants to access the data, that is to access the internet, to make uh, emails. So now the data demands are increasing. So that is why now GPRS has to come into light with some modifications in the GSM system. So GPRS is nothing but GSM with some modifications. So let us first of all see the architecture of GPRS. So this is the architecture of GPRS. If you pay attention and if you recall the architecture of uh, GSM that we have learnt in the previous lecture, I have also shared the link in the description box. So you will find that this particular portion is nothing but GSM having mobile station, then BTS, then BSC, that is base station controller, then MSE, MSE along with registers, that is home location register, visitor location register, and then finally voice network. So the above part that I have marked with dotted lines, you need not mark in your notebook, just you can uh, refer it for understanding. So that this particular portion is for GSM. And by adding some more nodes or you can say by adding some more components for data handling we have made it gprs so gprs support both voice calls as well as data and internet so for data part we have the three components as you can see very clearly they have been added that is sgsn ggsn and data network so this part is meant for data and also the components which are placed above have been upgraded for GPRS support system. So if I talk about the mobile station, the mobile station of GSM has to be upgraded. So this time the GSM mobile station was only meant for making voice calls. But in the case of GPRS, it is meant for making voice calls as well as to access the data. So therefore it will be a GPRS mobile station and it will be achieved or you can say you can get it by doing some upgradation in the GSM mobile stations. Similarly, the BTS part of GSM will be also upgraded with some software upgradation and it will be compatible with GPRS architecture. Now, if we talk about the base station controller, in the case of GPRS, now it came up with a packet control unit. Very, very important point to be noted over here is that in the case of GPRS, all the data which is transmitted and received is in the form of packets. So we have a program control, sorry, packet control unit over here, which controls or you can say further transmits the data packets. So the base station controller, re whenever receives some signal, it forwards it to the packet control unit and packet control unit further for proceeds with the signal. So as I have told you that GPRS is meant for voice calls as well as for data. So if the mobile station wants to make a voice call, then this particular path will be followed for voice calls. And if the mobile station wants to access the data, then this particular path will be followed. Okay, so I hope that this much part of the GPRS architecture is clear to you all. So what happens that GPRS system as it is meant for both voice calls and accessing the data, accordingly the path will be followed for voice calls and the data and the path will be followed for data. So if you want to make a voice call, then the mobile station will send the signal to BTS, BTS will send it to BSC. BSC will further send it to packet control unit and packet unit control unit will further proceed with the mobile station controller, HLR and finally to the voice network. So this will be the path followed for the voice call.
and if the mobile station wants to access some data or it wants to access the internet then mobile station to base station uh, base trans receiver station that is bts bts to bsc bsc to pcu that is packet control unit then packet control unit to sgsn sgsn to ggsn and ggsn to finally data network so this is the path which is followed for various signals now let me first of all note it down that pcu stands for packet control unit and i have told you its function that in the gprs every data will be transmitted and received in the form of packets so packet control unit is basically controls the these packets this data so packet control unit now we already know about mse hlr and voice network we need to know about sgsn sgsn stands for serving gprs support node serving gprs support node and what are its function if any person or any subscriber mobile station subscriber wants to mobile subscriber wants to access the internet then it will first of all it will first of all check whether the subscriber is authenticated to access the internet so the first function is authentication of subscriber then the second function is data compression it will compress the data it will suppress the irrelevant data and it will forward the relevant data so data compression is also one of the functions of serving gprs support node and the third function is if there is any mobile subscriber which is new in the network so it will register that subscriber in the network so registration of mobile network so these are the functions of serving gprs support node and this is how it helps to uh, send or you can say to reach up to the data network then we have ggsn in the architecture which is stands for gateway gprs gateway gprs support node gateway gprs support node and as the name is gateway that means it is simply an interface or a router between sgsn and data network it is simply a router it has certain algorithms routing algorithms in built in it that it suitably routes the data from sgsn to data network so it is simply a gateway or you can say it is simply a path it is simply an interface that is connecting sgsn and data network or it is simply a router so it is nothing but simply a router so that was all about gprs so that was the mainly the architecture of gprs as far as the theory part is concerned about gprs gprs is a third generation step it is a part it is a standard of 2.5 generation so it is we are it is not a third generation but it is a third generation step towards internet access so if you are using the word third generation then use step so it is a third generation step towards internet access also known as gsm ip gsm ip means global system mobile communication internet protocol okay also known as gsm ip as because the gsm system has been kept as it is and the data part has been added to it that means the internet accessing part has been added and the whole collectively becomes gprs so it is also called gsm ip as it keeps the users of the system online allows to make voice calls and access internet internet on the go 
okay so that is dprs we have already discussed it many a times this is only that we are writing over it over here the data or you can say the signals or data in gprs are transmitted and received in the form of packets okay which is very very important you must know it and from which uh, institute or you can say uh, from which stand institute the gprs specifications are written so they are written by etsi okay european counterpart of the american national standard institute sometimes also called as so it is european telecommunication standard institute and the one which is writing the specification for gprs is ansi that is the american national standard institute so the specifications of gsm and gpsi are written from there itself that is etsi we already know it another features are that it allows and upgrade to existing systems as you have already seen that we have upgraded the gsm system into the gprs one so the mobile users or you can say the handsets that were meant for gsm by simply giving a software update you can upgrade them to gprs so it allows an upgrade to existing system you don't have to completely change the system operators do not have to replace their equipment okay rather gprs is added on top of the existing infrastructure so existing infrastructure will remain the same only some add-ons were added okay now third feature is it is easy billing system that means the billing is done on the basis of the amount of data transmitted it is easy billing system billing is based on the amount of data transmitted and it also allows higher data rate because this time now besides voice calls you are also able to access the internet so obviously the data rates has to be increased and it allows higher data rate so that was all about gprs the main features of gprs the architecture of gprs so from this video hopefully you will get an introduction or an overview of gprs thank you all